Today we're going to be talking about inscribed angles. So what you're going to need to do, excuse me, you're going to need to draw a circle. No, actually, no, just try not to cough. Get it kind of cold. So right now, draw a circle to the best of your ability. And what I'd like you to do is from the center of your circle, I would like you to attempt to make a right angle. Right angle right there. Okay? There we go. So there's a right angle. So right there we know this is going to be 90 degrees. I'd like you to put a point right here. Call it A. Put a point right here. Call it B. And we know that the measure of arc AB is going to match the measure of the central angle right here. So whatever the central angle is, we know that arc AB also has to be what? 90 degrees. That's something you should already know. The central angle always matches its course, the measure of the corresponding arc. Now the next thing that I'd like you to do is we are going to draw what's called an inscribed angle. Inscribed means from right here, I'm going to go to another part of the circle on the inside of the circle, and I'm going to touch it right there to a point, just randomly choosing a point. <laughs> and then from that point, I'm going to touch it right back over here to point B. This angle right here is considered to be inscribed. I'm going to write the word. This is an inscribed angle. Right. Now this is 90 degrees, right here. And this arc is 90 degrees from A to B. This inscribed angle, I think you could pretty much see that this inscribed angle is definitely not 90 degrees, right? right. Okay. So we're going to get a protractor out. I'm going to take a look at this. Right. So I'm going to take a look at this. And I'm going to clear it all the way out. I'm going to rotate it a little bit, putting it right there on that point. I'm going to rotate it, and we're going to see how many degrees it enters. How many degrees does it look like it is? It's about 45 degrees. Huh. That's wild. Ooh. That's wild. It cuts the central angle like that. Well, it cuts the measure of this arc in half, and yes, the central angle is, from that arc, is always double the inscribed angle, and guess what? The measure of the arc is always double the inscribed angle. Or conversely, the inscribed angle is always half the measure of the corresponding arc. So here's what I'd like you guys to write. Write in your journal. The inscribed angle is keyword not sometimes always half remember I have a half the measure of its corresponding arc. So the inscribed angle is always half the measure of its corresponding arc. Or you could say what? You could say that the arc is always double the inscribed angle. So you could always you could say two different ways. Now, let me show you something kind of cool. It doesn't matter where you put the inscribed angle. So I'm changing colors. Watch this. Tell me where you want me to place it. It's over here. Right there? Right there? Okay. I'm going to go from there. I'm going to go from here. i got to go all the way to what? B. Right. Now, I'm going to take the protractor. Once again, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to make the 45 degree angle as best I can. Oh, oh man. There we go. There, now it's perfectly 45, right? Now, watch what happens. I'm going to take it right there, and let's see if it fits. 
Right there. See how it fits perfectly right in there? All right, do a different color. Crazy. From A, watch. To right there. And then from right there no. to yeah. C. So no matter where I make the inscribed label, no matter where I make it, where does it, what does it always do? It's always half the measure of the corresponding part every single time. So you can technically have an infinite number of inscribed angles going all the way through the circle. Does everybody see how they share what? They share this arc from A to B. That's a little too much height. Usually girls. Right? So they all share the arc from A to B. What, what, what's the measure of all of these angles? 45, and this was also 45. Okay? That's important. By the way, the next thing I want you to do real quick is in your journal, all right, I want you to make a circle. I want you to carefully draw a diameter going through the center of the circle. Here's the next thing I need you to understand. Whenever you have, you know what the arc of A, B is, no matter which direction you go. What's arc A to B, no matter what? Or from this side to this side? What's, what's, yeah, we know the measure of arc A, B is going to equal 180 degrees, no matter which direction you go. Which is kind of cool, because if you see a cord going straight through the center, that means no matter where you do this, what angle is going to be made every single time with an inscribed angle? No matter where you're going to be. That's right. No matter if I go here. So right now, how many right angles do I have being made right there? By the way, just so you guys, you guys can't see it, this right here is 90. This right here is 90. This right here is not 90. No matter where I put that. <coughs> See the 90 degree angle right there? It's right there. Now what is this? So what do you what's one of the clues sometimes? Look to see if you have a diameter, right? If you have a diameter, then you know that all those inscribed angles are going to be 90 if it, if it meets with the diameter. Okay? What if uh, the angle is more than 90? Well, then you have to look at the others. Like, for example, like there's certain arc, like this arc right here, say big arc, that's more than 180. So what you have to look for is you have to look for this arc, which corresponds to the sum of 4 and so you always have to go across from the arc. Okay? So you could have it. Now check this out. I'll, I'll do one more example real quick. I'll describe what you're saying. Okay? So right now, you have this. You have this. Okay? You, you're not going to use this side because you're only, you're only, the only angle you can deal with is this angle right in here. Which is only going to be going to which arc? This arc right here. However, if I make a really, 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 really wide, let's try, let's try to make, let's try to make a, a really big obtuse angle. There we go. That'll work right there. So you see this angle right here? Whatever that angle is, this arc will be double the measure of that angle. So if I get my protractor out right now, I think this is what you're asking, correct? So if I put this right here and I rotate it, how many degrees is that? That's about 105 degrees. All right, so this angle right here is about 105. Five degrees, I'm going to write 105, which means the measure of this arc right here in blue would have to be 200 and 
pin. So now you see how that's bigger than 180? Okay? So this angle opens up to that arm. So everybody, right now, would you guys please look at this problem right here? This is dealing with problems 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So right now, we have some important information that we need to write down. And as we write it down, I want you to write it down. So, um, right now you need to know that the measure of Wx, that measure is equal to 104. So what's that? 104. Okay? Changing colors. The measure of Wz. Yes, you can write it down. It's already written down in your paper. I'm writing it down. Okay, it's written down. Yeah. Oh, okay. It's, up it's on your paper. I'm writing it down because I'm zooming into the problem so you guys can see it. And last but not least, the measure of angle um, ZWY is 26 degrees. There we go. So we're going to start right now. The measure of WX. What I'd like you to do is just try to shade in. Wx. I want you to label W to X 104 degrees right there. 104. So Wx is 104. Wz from here to right there. Wz is a total of 88 degrees. And last but not least, it says. ZWY from Z to W to Y, which happens to be the measure of angle 2. The measure of angle 2 is equal to 26 degrees. So right now what we're going to do is we're going to start finding the measures of certain angles. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start with WX. Right now, if I draw an inscribed angle to W X. Angle 6 is the inscribed angle that goes with W to X. So knowing that this has to be half, that has to be 52 degrees because this angle is always half of that. Everyone so good? Yeah. Can you guys also see that angle 1 also shares, angle 1 also shares W to X. So angle 1 is also 52 degrees. Because these inscribed angles both are, what's their corresponding arc? Their corresponding arc is W to X. Okay. Let's check this out. Look at Z to Y. What is going to be the measure of z to y. Well, if that's a 26, then the measure of z to y has to be double. Oh. Yeah. Now, everybody, we have one arc left. We have one arc left. Y going all the way to x. So, you're going to have to take 360 degrees. You're going to have to take away 50 degrees. You're going to have to take away 88 degrees. And lastly, take away 104 degrees. All right? And that will give you the measure of arc y to x. So the measure of y x is what? 116. All right, so now, what I want you guys to do, I want you guys to see that y to x, look at this. Angle 3, angle 3 right there goes with what? The arc y, x. So angle 3 has to be half of that. So what is half of 116? Angle 58. That's right. Now, angle 5, what arc goes with 
angle five. What arc goes in? Don't tell me the answer. What arc goes in? Arc. Z. Arc Z Y goes with angle five. So angle five has to be half of fifty two, which also matches that. And last but not least, we have angle four. And what? Don't tell me the measurement of angle four. Uh, tell me what arc goes across from angle four. Mm -hmm. That's right. Arc DW or arc WZ. And that's directly across from it. So angle four has to be what? Half of 88, which is 44. There you go. And now you guys have all the answers to problems. One, two, three. Why, that, why am I using colors? So that each section you can see what, like, can everybody see how this angle now opens up to that red part? Right? So I'm trying to do it step by step. All right. That's one through six. Now, if we look at problem number seven, if we look at problem number seven, you'll notice that there is a diameter involved. What is the length of the diameter? It goes from H straight through U to J, which means that this right here, this angle right in here, has to be 90 degrees. That's a horrible looking 90 degree angle. But you know what? It doesn't look like that much. Yeah, it does. It's a little bit. It's a little and over here, you guys see H to G, and G to J, that also makes a what? Another 90 degree angle. Which means this, everybody. I'm going to give you guys a quick little hint of what I want you to do. You guys see angles 1 and 2? Yeah. All right. Paint off. Angle one and two, angle three and four. All right. So angles one and two are these angles right here. Angle one and angle two, they add up to ninety degrees. They add up to ninety. And by the way, angle three and angle four also add up to ninety degrees. So what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to solve for x and then plug it back in. What is angle 1 technically equal to? 5x plus 2. What's angle 2 equal to? 2x minus 3. Together they add up to 90. That's how you set it up. <coughs> Who likes you? Angle 3 is 7y minus 1 plus angle 4, which is 2y plus 10, is equal to 90. You have to solve for x, plug it in. You have to solve for y, plug it in. What's your final answer going to look like? I want to know what angle 1 is equal to. I want to know what angle 2 is equal to. I want to know what angle 3 is equal to. And angle 4 is equal to. So you take that information, you solve for it, and then you plug it back in. And this is what your answer box should look like. Angle 1, angle 2, angle 3, angle 4. With degrees in measurement. In case you're wondering why angle 1 and angle 2 add up to 90, these are complementary angles. Whenever you have a 90 degree angle, the other two angles have to be complementary. So 1 and 2 have to add up to 90, and 3 and 4 have to add up to 90 because they're inside of a right triangle. Those will always be complementary. Good luck.